Hey up everyone. Hey so I just wanted to kind of talk about the absolute fucking disaster that is the state of British politics right now. We're living in this country that is having a massive constitutional crisis. The entire way that the the country is working and is functioning is just being ad libbed. Like, one of the things that's like kind of shocked me a little bit. Um, so I did a video about British constitution and stuff. Yeah, is one of the things that's quite shocking is that how much of the British Constitution is actually based on like um, uh, like precedent and stuff and like um, that you expect certain things to be done but it's not actually codified in any kind of law right it's not written down in a law it's just the way that things have been done well then what that means is that like, we end up with this fucking Prime Minister that we've got who just seems to think he can do whatever he wants it's like, this guy takes over the highest fucking office of state in this country because a hundred thousand fucking Tories in the Conservative Party elected him to run their party and now suddenly he's Prime Minister. Yeah, this guy shouldn't be anywhere near fucking the like organs of power in the state. This guy is just a fucking disaster walking around. And also, and so because of these fucking, um, the way that, like, the, the, the country actually runs means that Boris Johnson's just running roughshod over it, just doing whatever he wants, pulling out all kinds of legalese and stuff to do, to argue what he's doing. I mean, the guy is a proven liar many times. I mean, what's the fucking job in, in journalism because he was a liar? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not slander or anything to call him a liar. He's quite clearly been proven to be a liar on, on more than one occasion. Do you know what I mean? And you, but you think, yeah, you've now, you're now the Prime Minister of the country, maybe you might start. But no, 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 nothing like that, right? So, this, this is the fucking state that, that we're in right now is so uh, there's a bit of a recap from like what i said i went through this before in, in one of my other videos but essentially what's happened is that the house of commons has taken away from the government the power to propose legislation and the house of commons went ahead and proposed some legislation they had a vote and it became a law yeah and the law said that if we don't have a, a, a eu deal on 31st of October, then we have to reapply for an extension. Like, that's basically what the law said. And then we've got fucking Boris Johnson, who's like, okay, I don't like, I don't like what's going on, so I'm basically going to shut down Parliament and stop you doing the things that you're going to do. So Parliament takes for itself these, these, these powers to be able to govern effectively if the House of Commons has basically taken over the right to govern the country away from the government this is unprecedented this is this isn't this, this has never happened in 2000 years of this country this has never ever happened this is a massive constitutional crisis what's going on right now so so he's not happy with what the parliament is, so he just fucking shuts it down, right, yeah. So the state of affairs that we're in right now is that all this is being fought out in the courts, yeah. So so when so like when um So when Boris Johnson wanted to go shut down the Parliament, right, yeah, he used this like old power that nobody fucking uses that you use when the when a parliament's coming to its end yeah so like the way that it works is that you have a parliament which is like a time period a parliament it's like how long the parliament lasts uh, is running for but then you have to shut it down the parliament and then you have an opening ceremony where it opens back up again yeah and in that opening ceremony the queen comes and now what happens is like after an election or something, Parliament gets shut down, then it comes back, then the government 
puts forward all the legislation that it wants to try and pass in the ne in the next parliament and then the queen reads it out and that's called the queen's speech yeah right so boris johnson went to the queen because it's the queen who shuts down parliament right yeah so boris johnson goes to the queen and he says to her that he wants to shut down parliament so that he can prepare a queen's speech for the opening of parliament yeah now that's fair enough that's basically what this power is used for, yeah? But this power is usually used to shut down Parliament for a few days. It doesn't take... It, Boris Johnson's shut it down for five fucking weeks. Five weeks he's shut it down for. It doesn't take five weeks to produce a fucking Queen's speech. All it is is a list of legislation. It takes you a couple of hours. You don't need five weeks to do this. Right, so basically... It's pretty fucking clear that he shut down Parliament, not because he wants to produce a Queen's speech, because he wants to stop Parliament from passing legislation, yeah? And from exercising its powers, he's trying to cut it off from underneath so it can't do of any of this stuff, yeah? That's the reason he shut down Parliament. Everybody fucking knows that's the reason that he shut down Parliament, yeah? So, the thing is that... There's now two fucking court cases that are going through the fucking court system, the judiciary in this country, yeah. So we had one that went to Scotland. Like, so we've got different legal systems in this country. We've got the like, English and Welsh legal system. There's a Northern Irish legal system. And there's a Scottish legal system. And there's slight variations in the way that they work, yeah. So somebody took, took Boris, the Prime Minister, got taken to court in Scotland, yeah. And Scotland looked at it and Scotland said, there's no way you should be shutting down Parliament for five weeks. You clearly lied to the fucking Queen. Yeah, right. The highest court in Scotland has defined that the Prime Minister lied to the Queen. Right. What? 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 Like, how, how fucking, like, how big a thing do you have to do? You basically just pissed all over the English Constitution so that you could stop Parliament and you've gone and you've lied to the fucking courts about that. Yeah, and the thing is that, like, what's going on is we're in a, we're in a situation where nobody's governing the country, right? Nobody has the power to govern the country. Boris Johnson and the government don't have the power to govern the country because they haven't got a majority in Parliament. So even if they propose legislation, they've got no way of getting that legislation passed. Yeah. So essentially, they're not capable of governing. Then the House of Commons has taken over these powers. So because the government can't govern, it was it's going to start governing instead. Yeah. But then you've got Boris Johnson's shut down Parliament. So essentially, we've got nobody running the country, right? Nobody, nobody's running the country right at the time where the clock is fucking ticking down to this fucking catastrophic economic suicide of a no Brexit deal. Right at the point of the biggest constitutional crisis of this country, nobody's running the fucking country. This is... This is a ridiculous state of affairs. How, how the fuck can a modern democracy get itself into this shit hole? Do you know what I mean? Like, nothing is happening. There is no government. There, nothing is being passed. We're just, we're just sleepwalking towards a no-Brexit deal and there's nothing anybody can do about it because the government's been shut down and because the government's not doing anything and because House Parliament's been shut down, there's nothing that can be done about this. So then we've got, like... So since since um, since the House of Commons passed this legislation that basically said that Boris Johnson would have to apply for an extension, yeah. So we've got Boris, who comes bumbling into the fucking number ten, screaming, uh, "Do or die! We will fucking be leaving on this day, whether it's a no deal or it's a not a no deal." I'd rather be dead in a ditch, he says, than, than, than get an extension. So he comes out with all this fucking bravado bullshit, yeah? And then, um, he 
So he comes out of all this bravado bullshit about like how he's not going to back down and whatever, and that he's going to take us into an ordeal, which it's like basically the abrogation of responsibility of a prime minister. The prime minister should do what's in the best interest of the country, and a no deal is not in the interest of fucking anybody. It, it's gonna that would just be an absolute disaster. You're talking about the devastation of your economy. You're talking about gutting of the financial services. The, the city of London would just crumble from being one of the largest financial centres in the world. It would just become nothing overnight. 80% of our GDP. We can't go, we cannot fucking have a no big deal Brexit. It's just not even conscionable. You can't. We can't do that. And we've got a Prime Minister going, yeah, no, we'll go for a no deal. What, right? So now he's found himself in this situation where, what does he do, right? It, and, and this is another thing, right? So he didn't, like, make an official... I'm going to have to go get a lighter. He didn't, he didn't give, like, an official um, response to the House of Commons passing this legislation. But he allowed it to be leaked out of, out of number 10 that he was considering just fucking ignoring the law. And just going ahead with it anyhow. Again, the Prime Minister, the head of the executive of the country, is seriously talking about ignoring the law. Like, like I can't believe this is happening, I seriously. Never in my life have I ever seen anything like this. The Prime Minister's threatening to break the law, right? Just so that he can destroy the country. I mean, you know, we all know that, like, fucking Rhys Mogg and Boris Johnson and all the fucking donators to the Leave campaign are all short in the fucking sterling. So if we go out on a no deal and everything goes shit, these people are going to make a shitload of money. We know that, right? Yeah. We don't want to think that maybe that's one of the reasons why they're doing it. <laughs> yeah? Do you know what I mean? Anyway, so we're in a situation where basically Boris Johnson says, whatever, I might just fucking ignore it. So we might end up in a fucking thing. But anyhow, right, so since the House of Commons passed this legislation, his, his rhetoric has changed a little bit, right? So, um, so... He's now saying, he's now saying, oh, we're going to go all out for a deal. Yeah, he said, he said, we're like maximizing, get, getting a deal. We're like really focusing on that. All everybody, everybody's like going for a deal now. We're going to be doubling, redoubling our efforts. We're going to be staying up all night and stuff. Yeah, he says this, but then an article in Financial Times about, so, when Theresa May was Prime Minister, she set up a new government department that's part of, that, like, is part of the Cabinet, yeah? She set up a new department called uh, Departing the EU Department, I think, something like that, or Leaving the EU. But basically, it's a de government department that is, that, is de that is dealing with Brexit, essentially, yeah? They're the ones that are sending out ambassadors and shit, yeah? It's that department that's dealing with Brexit, yeah? So, so I fucking... So Boris Johnson's telling us in the press how he's redoubling his efforts and he's really trying and he's really going to get a deal and everything, yeah, and that's all he wants to do. And find out in Financial Times that everybody, everybody who worked in the department for exiting the EU has now been sacked or moved to new departments, most of them, but they've been moved out of the department. And now the people who are in the department have are all new. They don't, they've, no, they've got no institutional memory of any of this. They haven't done any debating with the EU. They know nothing about They're starting from fucking ground zero. So all the people who've done all this debating and done all this de fucking... Who, who, like, went through the process of creating that thing for, for Theresa May and stuff, yeah, who've, who've, who've met all the people from the EU, they all know one another, they've all been in meetings together, they've been sat discussing it. All those people have gone. Like, how is... How is that running? What the fuck? What do you mean? You've just sacked everybody from the department. That makes no sense. No sense at all to do that. 
So now we've got fucking amateurs running it, right? And there's like half as many people in the department now as they were as there was a year ago. Right? That was from Financial Times, like whatever. So again, this is Boris lying, saying that he's doing something he's clearly fucking not. Yeah. And another thing, right? So, um. Uh, so, so now he's saying about this redoubling. And one, one of the things he's doing is he's basically flying all around Europe, meeting all the different presidents and prime ministers and what have you. Yeah, and one of the things he's trying to do, because this comes out from, it's almost like they think that they can that we're not going to talk to the people that they're talking to. Do you know what I mean? Like, it seems pretty clear what, what Britain's trying to do is he's just trying to use divide and rule tactics. He's trying to make bilateral agreements with different countries, yeah, where they're going, no, you can fuck off. We're a member of EU and we're acting as a block and we're all going to work together. We're not having a one-to-one -one thing with you. But, like, Britain, for some fucking reason, thinks that it can do that. But everybody's like, no, you can fuck off. We're not having that, yeah. So then what happens is Boris Johnson comes home and then he starts telling us how oh, he's really confident, really optimistic. Oh, after I went for my meeting with the Taoiseach, I feel really confident, he said, about this. I feel really optimistic, he said, when he came back from Luxembourg, yeah. Right, this is what he's telling us. But when you go and talk to the Taoiseach or when you go talk to the fucking president or prime minister or wherever it is, yeah, from Luxembourg, when you talk to them, they don't say, yeah, everything's... They say... He just keeps turning up and saying things that we've already said we're not going to agree to. There's nothing new coming from Britain. Britain hasn't actually proposed anything new since. It just keeps coming and telling us it doesn't want the backstop and stuff. All of these EU people are saying that's what Boris Johnson's doing. Going over there, trying to divide and rule, failing, and then coming away and, and, not, and bringing nothing to the table. It's essentially... These meetings are absolutely pointless. They're meaningless, right? You, if you come in, if you come into a discussion and a debate, you you need to bring something with you. Do you know what I mean? And the British are not doing that, right? It clearly says to you they're not trying to get a deal. Yeah, that's not the way. That if that if you want a deal, this is not the way that you fucking go about doing that. Do you know what I mean? That's clearly not what you do. So we've got everybody in Europe saying that Britain's not really bringing anything to the table. It's not really discussing anything new, just keeps going over old ground. They're getting really frustrated. They've given like a month, Britain a month to sort this out or something. They set a timeline for this. And Boris Johnson's telling us everything's going fine. Do you know what I mean? Like, like who to believe? Who to believe? Right? Because from the outside, it doesn't look like anything's getting done. So... The idea that Boris Johnson's all optimistic about this is just baffling. Based on what, Boris? Certainly not anything that anybody's telling you in Europe because they're telling us what they're telling you and it's not it's not good news. So, do you know what I mean? I mean, it must, it must go down as one of the worst Prime Ministers ever. I mean, not just with the constitutional crisis things that he's done. He's introduced six pieces of legislation and lost every single one of them. That's never happened. No prime minister's ever. He, he's not. He's never won a vote in the House of Commons, right? That's just no, not heard of. Our prime ministers have passed at least something in the House of Commons. He's lost six times in the House of Commons. He's got no majority. He's got no mandate to do anything, and yet he's intent on taking us over a cliff edge into the worst possible disaster that this country could ever face. And he's got no mandate to do that. But there's no but no, no other part of our constitution has any power to stop him from doing any of this. Do you know what I mean? It is essentially, it is almost dictatorial what he's being allowed to do and how he's using powers to ne neutralise any, any kind of scrutiny of anything that he does. Um, and this is the situation that we're in now in Britain. Um, the thing is that, like, he comes out with, um, like, recently they've been coming up with some ideas about what to do about the Irish backstop question, yeah? Yeah. So Britain, like, said, oh, well, we could have, like, a custom union for fruit and veg. And the EU were like, 
that's fine, but what about everything else? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the border's not just going to have fruit and veg going over it, you know what I mean? Like, we need something else. And the British, like, they come with this idea, and then the Europeans tell them what's wrong with it, but then rather than go, all right, come back and think about it again and try and solve the problems, they just come back with the same thing. And then you're like, yeah, you said that last week, and they're still going to give you the same answer as what we said last week. Do you know what I mean? The British are acting. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Ten years ago or something, if you thought about the British, you'd think of them as, like, diplomats. Do you know what I mean? They knew how to work on the fucking world stage, and they knew how to operate with other countries and stuff. And what Brexit's showing is that's, that's just not true. They seem to be ridiculously incompetent, full of, so full of themselves. They still seem to think the British Empire's here or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, they still think that they're... That, that Europe is just going to somehow bow down to them just because they're Britain. You know, we're Britain, you should do what we say. You know what I mean? And Europe are like, no, that's not going to happen. There's 400 million of us. Do you know what I mean? You're just a small fucking island on the, on the edge. Whatever. So, so, they keep coming up with this, this alternative to the backstop and the EU keep telling them that that's not good enough and then they just keep coming back with the same thing. Right? Incompetent. Absolutely incompetent. So then he was in Luxembourg over there, yeah? So he's in Luxembourg. And, yeah, he meets with whoever. And then he's supposed to have a press conference outside, yeah? But at the last minute, he just decides he's not going to do a press conference because there were some expats or something outside the gates who were, like, chanting, demonstrating or whatever, yeah? And because those people, they just decided not to have a press conference. So, so the president stood at the press conference with an empty podium at the side of him, yeah, and he basically, that, it was, that was, like, it was somewhat different, like, this, pre this press conference, what the, the, the guy from fucking Yugoslavia, from uh, Luxembourg did, is he, um, he basically slated Boris Johnson to fuck, basically saying this is a waste of time and stuff, right, what the hell is he doing here? And Boris Johnson gets over to Britain and he tells us how optimistic he is about it. He's like, did you not listen to the press conference this guy just said about your meeting? And now you're telling me that you're optimistic about how things are going to go. It just seems that, like, the whole political system's broken. It really is. It's not functioning. It's not fit for purpose in any way, shape or form. And the thing is that... Even when Brexit's over, yeah, even when we've finished with all this fucking shit, yeah, even, wh in whatever, whatever it ends up like, yeah, when it's all finished and it's over with, we're still going to be left with some pretty fucking, like, we're still going to have problems with our constitution, right, our constitution has just been ripped to pieces over these last few weeks, it's not functioning, it's not working, it seems like, you're gonna, we're gonna have to sit down and codify all this shit and write it down because it's not, we can't have a situation where, where the House of Commons is passing legislation, yeah? And the thing is that, like, because the House of Commons has done this and taken the power away from the government, that sets a precedent, do you know what I mean? So at some time in the future, the House of Commons can just decide to take away the powers from the government, from the government, right? That that's a recipe for absolute uh, absolute disaster. Do you know what I mean? You can end up with a small minority opposition that takes the power away from a group that's got a majority, right? There's nothing to stop that happening in this, yeah. But also, let's just say that, that again, this is like a repeat of this. So Parliament takes over, starts passing legislation. Then the Prime Minister just decides to shut Parliament down, right? For start off, the Prime Minister should not have the power to shut down Parliament. That makes no sense. Why would you allow him to do, to have that ability? What could that possibly? How could that possibly ever be a good thing? Yeah. So, so even after Brexit, right? We've got this massive constitutional crisis that needs to be sorted out here. We can't have Prime Ministers shutting down Parliament uh, uh, on a whim. 
We can't have prime ministers who are threatening to fucking ignore what Parliament says and break the law, essentially. We can't have prime ministers who are going to the fucking Queen and lying about things. Do you know what I mean? We can't live in a situation like this. This is not, this is not grown-up politics. This is, I don't know what this is. I don't know, I don't know what the hell is going on in this country. The political system's broken. The, the entire establishment and constitution and functioning of this country is just falling to pieces with, with, within our eyes. I have no idea what's going to happen. I have no, I literally have no idea what is going to happen. What is Boris Johnson going to do? What's his next move going to be? Do you know what I mean? Like, we can't have a no Brexit. It just, <laughs> we just can't. It's just crazy we, to, to even consider doing that. And we've got a Prime Minister who seems hell-bent on just fucking destroying the country so him and his rich friends can get rich. And yeah, that's it, mate. Britain, we're fucked.